Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin and we are taking a look today at the Amazon Fire TV and here it is and I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm going to show you some of the, the top level stuff and then I'll take your questions later and we'll explore it further. So it's a quad core Android device so it's got a lot of horsepower under the hood, a lot of gaming potential I think. It's not up to Xbox uh, One standards but I think it's certainly capable of keeping up with an iPad or something else that you would play more casual games on. Power, HDMI, you got to buy the HDMI cable. Uh, you have optical audio out for home theater systems if your HDMI isn't enough. You have uh, Ethernet here, which I always like to use instead of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is on board, of course, and there's USB, which I think will be exploited later because there are ways to, uh, ha you know, not hack into it, but use uh, uh, developer options to put your own software on here, which I haven't played with yet, but I'd love to hear some thoughts on that from you. Uh, so this is the box, and here's the interface, and it's actually uh, a really, really nice interface. So let's cut over to that real quick, and you can see uh, just how fluid it is. And they've done a nice job on this. It's very snappy and responsive. Uh, the top level here is your recent things that you loaded up uh, and you can kind of scroll through those. Now what's neat is that, you know, the video starts up almost immediately. And I think it keeps like a cache of some of the things that you were watching, but you know, I've done a whole bunch of stuff on this thing this afternoon, this evening, and uh, it, these videos still just pop up like almost immediately. And they start off kind of low res and they, you know, as they do on a lot of these things, they very quickly ramp up to HD. But I was really impressed with just how uh, quickly that uh, those videos start up. Now this thing lives in the Amazon ecosystem. So uh, all of the, the, the kind of the neat nifty little features around finding things tend to just stick to uh, buying things from Amazon. So I'm going to show you on the remote here, there's a little microphone button here and I can say house of cards. And what it's going to do is go out and, oh, it couldn't, didn't get it that time. Usually it gets it pretty, pretty quickly. House of cards. And what it's going to do is go out to the Amazon uh, cloud and ask uh, it to interpret my speech. And as you can see here, uh, it was able to uh, pick that up and we're going to go uh, click that button there and confirm it. Now, the thing is, though, is that, you know, House of Cards is a Netflix production. So you would expect, you know, you'd maybe find it on Netflix or have some options. But uh, when you do a voice search, it's only going to bring you uh, to the version that you can buy on Amazon for uh, $2.99. Now, it's also interesting is that the movies and TV and stuff you buy for regular cash, but the apps are using a new coin model that uh, Xbox had, but kind of abandoned, you know, where you buy the points and then uh, buy the app. So if we go down to the app store here, hard lines here, and that one is 299 or 299 coins. So again, you're gonna have to fill it up with coins and then, you know, obviously things are gonna be priced in such a way that you always have to add more to kind of get over the top. And I, I don't know why they're doing this. I just hate that notion of having to like just park my money with Amazon if I wanna buy something later. Uh, but that's going to be the deal. Now you can get a thousand free coins, or about 10 bucks, if you buy a controller from Amazon, uh, but you don't need to use their controllers. In fact, uh, any Bluetooth controller will work. I've tried it with this little SteelSeries controller today and my Ouya controller, both paired up just fine with the uh, Amazon Fire TV. So you can uh, do some pretty cool gaming on that. Uh, we're going to check out the games in a second. I did want to show you Plex though. So let's go uh, hit my desk camera here for a second. I'm going to show uh, a TV show that I've recorded. Uh, so I'm going to go back to to my recent apps here and Plex is available. You got to spend 99 coins on it. And uh, what's interesting in my state, we have 1% sales tax on uh, digital goods. So they actually charge you an extra coin for sales tax. So they even work that in there uh, as they go. Uh, but well, here, here's a, it's almost human. It's a show on Fox that I was start trying to get into. I never did, uh, but I have it recorded here and I can just hit the play button. It goes out to my Plex server and plays it back. Uh, so that works great. Uh, the one thing that I, I found didn't work too well though was you know, playing back those MKV files that we did on the Blu-ray player earlier, or on the, uh, the Roku player, you know, we were able to basically stream a whole Blu-ray MKV file uh, to our Roku streaming stick, that little stick that we stuck in the, in the TV or onto the receiver. We had like a full-blown HD experience, you know, full exact duplicate of the movie that I had purchased, along with uh, digital audio getting passed to the receiver. Doesn't quite work on here just yet. Uh, Plex can play back the movie transcoded, but when you do that direct transfer, just you know, send the entire file over to this thing, uh, it wasn't working that well. When it did work, I wasn't getting the digital audio, I wasn't getting Dolby Digital, and I wasn't getting DTS. This is capable of that pass-through because the Amazon movies that do have 
uh, Dolby Digital on board will pass through to the receiver properly, uh, but just for some reason, Plex just doesn't play well with it just yet. So I think we'll have to see how that develops. There is no DLNA playback on here at all, so uh, you're not going to really you're really going to have a hard time playing back your own stuff. Uh, there are some ways to do it. Plex obviously being one of them. If you're not into the into the Dolby Digital audio, uh, you can also uh, load up another app that they have on here down at the bottom. Let me pull this up real quick. Uh, they have a uh, cloud drive application, so you can load in uh, files from your smartphone or over the web, uh, provided they're compatible with the, uh, the TV device here, you can play them back on your TV. But it doesn't have, like the Apple TV has, it doesn't have you know, the, um, uh, the playback with the AirPlay, where you can just toss a video file directly from your phone to the device. You're going to load it into their cloud app and then kind of go from there. Now, the moment many of you have been waiting for, the gaming, we're going to pull up uh, Asphalt 8, which I, I, I tend to just run this game on a lot of stuff just to kind of do a comparison because it's free and it runs fairly well. So I'm going to pull this up right now. I'm going to show you, though, uh, that my controller, this little Steel Series free that I've had for a while, uh, this works just fine with it. So that's the, the nice thing is that you don't need to buy that joystick from Amazon. Uh, both the Ouya controller, like I said, and this one have been working just fine. So any Bluetooth controller, I think, will uh, probably do do the job and we're just going to go here and as you can see I'm hitting the, uh, the keys on here and it's going through its motions I'm just going to go skip through all this stuff and try to get to a race as soon as we can without buying anything hopefully and we will go over to our main screen so you can see the graphics on this this is at 1080 so uh, this is how it'll look largely on your TV and give it a second to load. Now this game is about a gigabyte and change. So um, the, the onboard storage of the Fire TV is only eight gigabytes. So I would imagine they're gonna have to activate that USB port pretty soon on there. So uh, we'll just let this boot up here. But you can see it runs I mean, really smoothly and uh, the controller works pretty well and I'm, I'm happy with that. And the fact that I'm not you know, having to use their, uh, their stuff if I don't wanna buy the $40 controller and I have another Bluetooth controller. Could not get the PlayStation 3 controller to work with it. So uh, we'll keep playing with that and see if we can uh, make any progress on there. But yeah, the games work and they, they play pretty nicely. I think it's, you know, it's, again, it's not gonna be like an Xbox One or even an Xbox 360, but it can do uh, you know, high level Android stuff and do it uh, pretty well. And I think uh, you'll have a good time playing some casual games on that. It's kind of what maybe the Ouya should have been, but you know, Amazon has a lot more uh, oomph behind it uh, to make this sort of thing work. So that is the Amazon Fire TV, and I, I think it's nice. They've done a really nice job putting this box together. Is it any better than the Roku, though? And that's the big question, because they are very similar in what they offer the consumer. And I have to say, probably not. I mean, if you're living in the Amazon ecosystem and all the stuff you do is Amazon, then yeah, definitely better than the Roku. But you know, for Netflix and all the other apps that you might run, uh, the Roku does a really fine job, and they, actually the apps feel very similar. The Netflix app really felt very, very similar similar between the two devices. So, you know, I don't think there's that much going for it just yet. I think there will be in the future. I would like to see uh, DLNA playback on the Amazon device. I would love to see those Blu-ray MKVs play back as nicely as they do on the Roku streaming stick on this, because I know it can certainly handle that. Uh, and we'll see a lot more as these apps get developed for it. The one thing I really don't like about the app infrastructure, though, is the fact that they have this coin system. I mean, Microsoft got away from points because it was so confusing. Uh, the fact that you got to buy movies with dollars and apps and games with points, I think, is not going to work out too well for Amazon, or at least not uh, work out well for consumers looking to buy those items. So we'll see. Uh, where that goes over time. But I'm going to keep coming back to this because I think we're going to have a lot of neat things to discuss with it. But if there's things that I missed in this video, uh, please leave a comment and I'll do a follow-up on it because I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about in the future. This is Lon Simon. Thanks for watching.